What's up, everybody? So happy to be back with you. Um, today we're going to have a little bit of fun. I've sort of been teasing this one a little bit this week um, because I've been doing a couple of little uh, tests around the house just to see um, what some of these products uh, that are out there are doing. Kind of give some comparison as far as uh, humic soluble powder, uh, humic liquid, and uh, the humic granular. And, and I think this is a really good... <sighs> okay, let me preface this first of all. I want everybody to understand. I own a fertilizer company. I manufacture this product. This is one that I do. This comes out of our plant in Georgia. It is made a certain way to get it to what it is. And so you need to know that. Now, this video is not going to be about pitching this product, okay? This is going to be about why uh, I choose to do it this way, why uh, my feelings about it, and just kind of give you some things to chew on. And whatever you end up choosing is totally up to you. Nobody's ever gonna fault you for it from this end, just so that you have everything and get some visuals in your head. So what I have with me today and what is going to make up this particular uh, study is a 90% soluble powder. This is readily available. You can find it online everywhere. And a lot of people go this direction because it's cheap, um, sort of. You know, you can get a couple pounds for 25, 30 bucks or whatever. And then that would give you the ability to make, say, two gallons of solution. Okay, so that's, that's the soluble powder. Then I also have granular. Um, again, this is like granular linardite. Uh, you will have seen it. You will have known it from different sources who manufacture this stuff. Um, how it is supposed to break down uh, with water and, you know, do its thing. So that, that's going to be about a 72% humic content in that particular mix. And then, of course, on this end, we have our 12%. Humic 12 that we manufacture, 12%. So the first thing that most people think of is, well, why wouldn't I get something with the highest concentration? That seems like it would make the most sense, okay? So I think we need to talk about the processing of the way that the powders work. Now, there's a couple of different things, and don't be fooled, so you need to make sure that you know uh, what you're getting, and then we'll sort of talk through it. With the powders, and this is, like I said, it's a super fine powder, uh, it is very soluble, it will probably dust up as I blow it away. Like here, the wind will kind of kick it. You'll see it move around. But that is the soluble powder right there. So it's super, super fine, okay? And for most people who supply this particular product, uh, the way that it's stated that it's made is the shale is reacted in an alkaline bath the way we would do this, and then it's dehydrated dehydrated back out and they take whatever's left over and that's what they're gonna sell you as the material okay with this when you're talking about a granular humic this is just taking the shale putting it together with a binder prilling it and then selling it okay so I think it's a good one to start with start with the granular because there are a lot of them out there and it's probably a good idea to sort of showcase. So what I want everybody to think about is this is their soil surface, this paper towel that I have right here. So I'm gonna have to run in and get some more paper towels because I forgot them inside, but let's just go ahead and put a few of those on there. So the concept behind the prill is what? Easy delivery, uh, high amounts of content, and you're going to be able to get it into the soil in however much time that takes, right? So, we're just gonna do that, let it sit, see if it's gonna start to break through. Likely not. Uh, this is something that takes a while to break down. Um, multiple waterings, multiple hydration, and then you'll start to see the prills break through. But you can see, you know, we've got clear water flowing through, nothing really else. So, you know, we can grab these and maybe break them up a little bit. Sure, do that. Now we can water again. And let's see what's actually making it through. 
This is what I want to show everybody. So these prills will break down eventually. But take a look and see what is on the paper towel. Okay, it's the stuff that I just crumbled up. You've got these broken down pieces that are just here on the surface, not able to penetrate this particular membrane. How well is that gonna travel through your soil as it breaks down? It will, it will break down, it will push, but it's going to take a while. And what are you gonna get out of that? How long is it going to take? What sort of benefits are you going to get? All right, so now, bear with me. I gotta go get another paper towel. I'll be right back. And we're back. Did you miss me? Hopefully that word from our sponsor was a good one and you were able to uh, look at some other stuff. But anyway, we're getting hung up right here, right? So there's your granular. Your granular is going to break down. It is going to move in. I'm gonna talk about what the benefits of this material are going to be in just a second, but I wanna show you how it works. This water is still quite, quite clear. There's not really anything that's gone through here. So let's just put it back in there because it's not gonna make much of a difference. Now, over on the side, I've had a little um, um, time lapse going to just kind of show the settling of this other material. So I'm gonna get that out of the way right now. I went ahead and mixed up a 12% solution with the soluble powder. And it didn't take long. You could see the sediment down here and maybe see that it's a little clearer. If I could you know, get it into the light, you could probably see what was happening here. But it managed to drop out relatively quickly. So what I'm going to do here in all uh, scientific and proper manner is use this plastic knife mix it back up it's sludgy on the bottom i can feel it and i want to show you two things this cup here on uh, my left is the humic 12 in a full concentrate and this on the right is a soluble powder in a concentrate 12 percent as well watch just this quickly so that you can see the difference right here ready you guys see what that looks like Interesting, okay? Humic 12, soluble powder on this side. What you get a lot of over on the soluble side is little flaky material that just does not dissolve. It doesn't break down. This is a pure solution. Everybody likes it when I hold up these brown fingers to the screen for some reason, but now you can see what that is. So let's do this. We're gonna go ahead and run the same exact thing. Now remember, these are concentrates so we are going to be putting um, both of them through the exact same test so you can see what is what uh, when it hits our little membrane. Let's do that right now. i to get my little rubber band on here. And we'll do the uh, soluble powder first. And let's just see what's left behind, what makes it through, what doesn't, right? So again, that's full strength. Let's just put this in here like this. It's going to make a great mess. Start to get that filtering through. And I'm just immediately seeing how much of a dusting is in the top of the paper towel right here. And enough to where it's actually slowing down the water from being able to flow through. Okay. So let's just keep going. And I, I mean, this is settling out really fast. It's, it's doesn't really stay in solution all that well. Let's keep her going. Nice little drain. See, it's kind of coming through like dirty coffee is what's happening because there's so much material that's getting stuck here on the top. And think about that like your soil surface. How much is going to stay behind and how much is actually going to penetrate down through the soil surface and make it down into the soil, into the root zone where you want it. Right? 
starting to make sense. So whatever heavies and solids they leave behind, well, at some point, that's some stuff that you're gonna have to deal with, uh, not making it all the way through the way it's supposed to and getting this dusting on your soil surface. Now, the benefit of having the carbon material in here and these insolubles is what? These are homes for microbes, okay? So we want that. But if they're not making it down into the soil, what good is it, right? We need stuff to get down through the soil surface, penetrate deeper, especially if you're dealing with clay and uh, any of those heavier, more compacted materials. If you've got particle sizes that are bigger than your clay, how are they ever going to make it down into the soil? You're just dealing with, you know, not much. It's kind of, kind of a silly way to do things. This is probably gonna go everywhere. Ooh, that's nice. I don't even know if I need to show you how well this is gonna go through, but it's still thick and moving through and spreading through every single surface and getting right down into the soil with an easy passage. That's the difference between a solution and a suspension, right? Solution versus suspension. This is material all the way through it. The fulvic fraction is still a part of it and you're getting through the entire soil surface. So when you look at that, it is spreading itself across and moving down through the system, getting all over the place quickly. Follow me? So when you're looking at material, it's not always about just the concentration. It's about the efficacy of that concentration. And I think that that's where a lot of people get a little hung up. It's like, well, this is so much stronger. Okay, so if you have an unreacted material, and this is what I want everybody to consider when they're thinking about what sort of source they want to put down is this. If everybody's making humic out of linardite shale, and not everybody does, I mean, it can come from pretty much any organic matter that's put through processes, and it's usually dead, you know, plant matter, whether it's peat or, um, you know, it, that's really the main other substance that people use. So that material, uh, as far as the linardite goes, is fossilized plant material. It's a brown coal, a dirty coal. And in order to get to those levels of humic that are available in that plant or that are tested to or in that material, it's gone through millions and millions and millions of years of decay and heat and seismic change and you name it, right? So that material has already processed down to what it can be. It's holding tightly now inside of that shale. The linardite is keeping it as what it is. So if you think that you're just going to take that material and spread it on your lawn and all of a sudden all those humic acids and chains are going to detach, sorry, it took 10 million years for it to get the way it is. I don't think a week on the lawn is going to make it do anything different. The only real benefit that you're getting in putting down a, a granular or a compacted material or even a soluble powder is that you're getting these components that are a little larger particle for microbes to hang on to. And that is important. But you have to put down so much even to penetrate the soil level. That's why we would have a rate of say six or nine ounces on humic on, on a 12%, but you have to put down 150 pounds an acre, which comes down to three pounds per thousand. So, you know, we're talking about in fluid ounces, uh, less than half a pound uh, versus three to four pounds on the other material and actually seeing a visual result. So I think that's important to talk about. Why are we getting that? Because we're leaving the fulvic fraction in here. And a lot of the time when you do an extraction and then you dehydrate, you've lost the material that was in the solution, that it's gone. So we're not getting the fulvic fraction out of this material either. And all humic has to have it. So humic acid before it became humic acid was fulvic acid chains that start to bond together. They polymerize and become humic acid. So the benefit that you're actually getting from the material, especially when we do it the way that we do it, we're running this through an alkali bath. We're giving it a long, long time to be in a readily available form so that when you guys get it, you can use it, put it out, and actually see physical changes, including your grass can change color, uh, your roots are going to get bigger, and overall your efficiencies for your fertilizers are going to go up as well. And this material, and this is a quart and a half of water, we're just gonna put a couple of drops in here. See how it spreads through the water.
Okay, that's our H12 right there, Hemic 12 at work. You could probably, not even on the camera, be able to tell much of a difference between the concentrate and now that that's in water, but look at how it just created this solution. Mixed right in, dropped in, fantastic. I'm gonna have to stir this crap back up again. And, uh, I don't know, my stirring thing is, ah, here we go. And my stirring knife, it's all packed into the bottom again. It's all falling out. Get that mixed back up so I can use it. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's put a drip in. As with so many things, timing is everything. The battery went dead on the GoPro while I was doing that particular thing where I was showing this material mixing in with the soluble. So now I'm going to do it again. Let's give this to a plant. I think one of our plants can use it. Why not? All right. Let's show this one more time. I do still have some clean water here. Not quite as much as the other, but let's get this right up next to the camera so you guys can really see what this is going to do. So I'm going to put the soluble in here. See that? Got to stir it up again because it's getting all packed again. Man, this stuff just goes right to the bottom. I feel sorry for people who try to use this not fast enough, but look at it. See it? See how it clouds? But now, this, as we go here, you're going to see particulates start to float around in there. See it? It's cloudy. Here's our other one. Still. Okay, that's our Humic 12 one that we did. Now, look at how much I've actually used out of here, like nothing. Not even an ounce has gone in on any of the things that I've shown you so far. See the difference? Solution versus suspension. I mean, I could put this whole thing in here. It's still not gonna get as dark as what we're doing. And still, look, I stirred it up, and look what's still left in the bottom. Just kind of pancaked in there. So, my feeling is that, for the most part, you're just not getting what you think you're getting when you're doing these powders. And I'm telling you that this, what I'm using, this material in here is reputable. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. It's used all over the place. People like it, they know it. And, you know, again, when we're dealing with these little concentrations, what a difference it makes to be able to get a true solution material into a liquid and be able to apply it because I know that this is going to make it right down into the soil where this, I can actually see trails right here on the edge of this. Look at that. So that tells me that I'm gonna be leaving stuff behind all the time. And I think that that's where you really start to see the differences between going with a full solution versus a powder or or even a suspended because I do know that there are companies out there that are selling reconstituted humic material and it's just well, it's no good it's not going to do what you want it to so let's check this off let's run through the benefits because I, I did tell you I want to make sure that everybody understands what they're getting when they put it out so if you're going to run a granular if you're going to put a granular humic out you're going to have to put a lot down and I mean a ruddy ton of it um, in order for this to have any sort of benefit and you're not going to see it in your turf You'll see it in the other material that you're applying your other fertilizers can get caught up into this You'll see it in water retention um, But you're not going to see it as far as the rooting goes as much uh, As other options because it's just not making its way down into the soil as much as a liquid can and when I say this you, people are trying to make these particles go as small as they possibly can and why are they doing that because they're trying to make it mimic liquid so why would you try to mimic liquid when you've actually got liquid right so then the powder we're talking about the powder now soluble powder there's a lot of goodies that have been lost if they're dehydrating this material out and then selling it this way yeah you're getting high humic concentrations but you're not getting much else out i mean we have a lot of sludge material that we have that we could turn into a powder like this and it's it's not great if you could put out Again, another just ton of it um, and spread it around like a top dressing, you know, you may be onto something there. So uh, stay tuned for that. So finally, with a full solution, full solution material, and I do think that I need to let everybody know, you know, how this works for us and the way we do it, why we do it the way that we do it. 
In order for us to go to a finished product on our Humic, you're looking at a six to eight week process. We take a long time with it. It moves through 13 different tanks, goes through multiple different settlements. Uh, we are making that material come together stronger and stronger. That's why when I showed you it dipping into the, the cups with my fingers, how much it sticks and holds onto how it's a, a full on integrated solution. It's not separate particles like you could see the dust on the other one. So the point is when that drops into water, it fully disperses, absolutely fully disperses. And this will hang like this for a long time, even in just regular water. I mean, I could keep pouring water to this, gallons and gallons, and it's going to take a long time before that stuff ever runs clear because it's got now, it is in the solution. So meanwhile, back over to this guy, it's already settling out, you know, and that was at a, hell, I put in 15 times as much into that. So that kind of gives you a little bit. Now, when we talk about that soluble powder again, you're, you're looking at homes to bacterial colonies. That's what you're looking for. So that, that's what you're gonna get out of it. You get it more carbon. And again, it's gonna mimic the same thing that the granular is doing. Maybe you get a tiny bit more out of this as far as where it's going to go and how it's going to get down into the plant. You might get a little bit more of a benefit than going this route, but that remains to be seen. What we know over time is that we're getting this through like every pore space possible and available and the material is flowing down through. And I do leave a significant amount of carbon in here, uh, somewhere around six or 7% that is technically insoluble, but because everything has come together in such a way and this liquid is so viscous, it stays in its solution. Now, if you got a tote of it or a bottle and it sat for a long time, you'll find you'll see a little sludging across the bottom and then you give it a little shake and that material goes right back in. Um, so that's the material where your colonies, your, your bacterial colonies are forming, where you're going to get that greater benefit, uh, again, like adding these more carbon materials. So at the end of the day, just know what you're buying. Um, it's not about the concentrations. Uh, it's about what you're going to get out of those concentrations. So just keep that in mind, uh, you know, as time has gone on, there's some cool studies coming out from some universities that have really done a comparison between uh, granular, humic, straight shale, uh, peat humic, uh, all of those kind of things, and liquids and showing what the difference is and rooting availability, uh, water drainage, uh, plant available water, uh, nitrogen efficiencies, all of those kind of things. There's some really cool stuff coming out that, that's gonna be brought up, I think, at this year's GIE, which is exciting. So anyway, hit me up with questions. I think maybe you understand now why we do it the way that we do it. The longer and slower the process, the better the result of the product, the better result your plants are going to get, and the material is just simple and easy to use. So, question, comments, hit me up. Glad to see everybody again. I'll talk to you all real soon.